this video focuses on the configuration and deployment of local internet breakout in branch locations. As you can see from the summary page, we have a good service operating between the data center and the branch. And for this demonstration, we'll be using Internet Connection 2 to provide a local internet breakout. In the branch, we have a Windows computer connected to the SD-WAN appliance, and it is able to access files in the data center uh, for download and use, as you can see here. However, if we want to be able to access SAS applications like salesforce.com, this is not possible as we have no internet service present in the data center or branch at this time. So let's enable local internet breakout in the branch. This configuration could be done through SD-WAN Center, but uh, on this particular demonstration, we're going to run it through uh, the MCN node. So the configuration needs to be done for the branch and we need to access internet service. We click add and we're then able to create our internet service. So we want to be able to create a default route to capture traffic to send to the internet and we'll give that a higher cost so it sits further down the routing table. Uh, you can also disable export default route and as you can see from the message if you enable WAN-to-WAN -WAN forwarding which is a feature put inside any intermediate or MCN node we are then able to export this default route to other branches so they can aggregate upon this particular branch for internet connectivity. So we'll disable that feature for now and click apply. If we want to go to WAN links, we then enable the WAN link we want to use. So in this case, we're going to use internet number two. Uh, there are options here that we can then use, uh, which is primary. So this will be the primary connection used by the SD-WAN appliance for local internet breakout. Alternatively, create a secondary backup link, uh, or we can create a balance link, which enables us to also use uh, links of last resort uh, or metered connections like an LTE link and click apply. We then need to be able to create a rule to uh, permit traffic to use this local internet uh, service uh, and for the purposes of this demonstration we'll leave these as default but we will select the internet connection we want to use and click apply. So that's our internet service constructed uh, and we want to be on a click our audit button which will then tell us if there's any other tools we need to set up. And you'll see there's a warning here, which is saying that the branch needs to have dynamic NAT. And to do this, we need to enable tracking. So tracking can be done in one of two ways. We can go to the firewall, where we can enable tracking locally in the branch, which is what we'll do for this demonstration. Or alternatively, we can go to global, and we can enable it here, which then enables it for every single location within inside the SD-WAN network and decisions need to be made from a design level as to whether that's something we want to do. We'll go back to firewall and we'll notice that we can click on the branch. We still have this triangle here and by clicking audit it will then check to see if we fixed the configuration which we have and we can also look at the dynamic NAT policy which has been automatically created as part of the service. So this is an outbound NAT uh, which will basically use port address translation uh, through the internet service from any internal zone using this as a default route and then outbound through the internet connection. Also, if we look in routes, we can see a route has been added to show what the service is that's needed. Now that's the configuration complete. We shall save this as a new file name. So we'll call that um, local internet breakout and save. We then need to export this to our change management system so we can push it out across the devices and click export. Now there's a handy link here to jump straight to change management or you can use the menu on the side. So uh, we have some items here you may not have seen before so we can use upload uh, which would then allow us to upgrade software within the network but also in here is our change management and this is the new file that's been passed from the configuration editor. We can verify that configuration to see if it's going to be able to be pushed across the entire network and verification is successful. So let's stage our appliances. So staging builds the configuration uh, and uses the uh, configuration delivery mechanism to push the files out to all of the remote devices that are relevant. Uh, and you will see here that it says state preparing. We 
just going to push it out to the branch as well now where we unpack. And that's the configuration packages delivered to all appliances. Clicking next takes us to the activation where we can then start using these software packages. So we can either use 10 seconds uh, to activate in. So this gives us a mechanism to uh, roll it out at a later date. Uh, and you can then use the abort key uh, to uh, stop any configuration going out to the network. But for our purposes, we're just going to click activate and stage. At this point, you can't abort. You're now in the configuration. But remember, revert on error is always available. And we click done. And we can look at monitoring as well. Now, let's look back at our client who wants to be able to access salesforce.com. We now have access to salesforce.com and can start using the applications that we require for our day-to-day -day life. So these applications uh, will be running through the firewall and by clicking on firewall you can then also see if we refresh the page, connections outbound through the internet service. Um, if we go to the branch, my apologies. And here you can see the domain name services being pulled out and various connections and our Salesforce connection.